Welcome to part two of the history of essential or history of aromatherapy with essential oils, the timeline. So we're going to go right into this going up to the 19th century. So by the 19th century, mo most of the pharmacopoeia of England, Germany, and France were referencing and prescribing essential oils for a variety of illnesses. During this time, tuberculosis was a common affliction. Yet workers of the flower processing plants used to make perfumes generally remain disease free. Believing that essential oils and plants were protecting the workers, the first recorded lab test of the antibacterial properties of essential oils was performed in 1887. And in the late 19th and early 20th centuries, essential oils were reintroduced into modern medicine by accident. In 1910, the French chemist, René Maurice Gottfosse, was working in the labs of his family-owned cosmetics firm when he suffered a bad burn on his hand. Now, there are a few variations, some very elaborate and dramatic, uh, but the truth is that it healed poorly and got infected. So then he just rubbed the lavender essential oil all over his hand and was amazed at how quickly and effectively his hand healed after using the lavender oil. And he noticed such a stark contrast, you know, within even overnight usage. So during World War I, 1914 to 1918, the use of aromatic essences became widespread in civilian and military hospitals. And Dr. Gottfosse continued his studies even more so. He got so inspired and encouraged by that incident that he shared his studies of essential oils with Jean Valnet, who was a colleague, friend, and medical doctor practicing in Paris. During World War II, 1939 to 1945, Dr. Valnet began using therapeutic-grade essential oils on patients suffering battlefield injuries after exhausting his supply of antibiotics as a war physician. He found them to be so powerful and effective in combating and counteracting infection and was able to save the lives of many soldiers that way. Now, in the 1960s, the main function of aromatherapy was introduced, mainly to relieve stress through massage. The first aromatherapists were taught to concentrate only on relieving the stress so that the body's own healing mechanism would be brought into play to alleviate symptoms brought on by the stress, such as migraines, menstrual problems, eczema, etc. The perfume industry remained the same until technological advancements in the late 1900s made it possible to isolate major constituents of essential oils. This technological advancement led to the creation of synthetic chemicals and drugs. Originally, it was believed that by separating the major constituents and then using those constituents or in synthetic form, it would be beneficial therapeutically and economically. However, it actually weakened the use of essential oils for medicinal and aromatic benefits because essential oil molecules were designed by God to remain intact or synergistically. Um, and that all the components, even the most trace of compounds, work in that synergistic way to bring the body into homeostasis. So all of the components are important, not just isolating the one big chunk of it. So to isolate one compound is to actually weaken the therapeutic benefits. And not only that, but synthetic by and large may also have adverse reactions to the body. And when you hear about toxic essential oils, this is where it stems from. When they isolate that one component, our body is not naturally made to handle that one component all on us at once. There's a reason they all work together for our body's best benefit. But that's a whole different thing in itself, but I just want to give you that little nugget of information there. Very important. So moving forward, so we had Dr. Gottfosse who taught Dr. Jean Valnet and Dr. Valnet began his own teaching. And two of his students, Dr. Paul Vallesh and Dr. Jean-Claude Lepraz, 
expanded on his work clinically investigating the antiviral, antiseptic, and antifungal properties in essential oils. In 1978, Dr. Paul Galash published his three-volume study on the clinical uses of aromatherapy for treating a wide range of infectious and degenerative illnesses, resulting in aromatherapy beginning to achieve a level of acceptance by conventional doctors in France. That's huge. Even insurance companies began to accept aromatherapy and pay for treatments. Now we have Henry Viod, and I apologize, it's uh, spelt a little bit differently on here, um, was a pioneer of French aromatherapy, cataloging the conditions and criteria in which essential oils had to meet to be able to use them in medical treatments. His belief in the purity and preservation of essential oils for therapeutic benefits helped usher in the birth of modern aromatherapy. He has stated, oils for medical purposes should be genuine, absolutely unchanged through any type of manipulation and authentic, only the oil from a specific type of plant. And moving forward, we have Robert Tisserand, who searched for a copy of Dr. Gutfasse's book on aromatherapy for 20 years, and upon locating one, edited the 1995 reprint. From England, he is responsible for being one of the first to bring knowledge and education of aromatherapy to English-speaking nations. His book, The Art of Aromatherapy, was the first aromatherapy book published in English. And moving forward, we have Dr. Daniel Pinuel, a French medical doctor, and Pierre Franchon, a French biochemist co who collaborated together to co-author the first essential oils reference book that cataloged the various medical properties of over 270 essential oils, as well as how to use them in a clinical environment based on their clinical experience of administering the oils to patients. It has become the primary resource for dozens of authors worldwide in writing about the medical benefits of essential oils. And aromatherapy remained in the background as Western or allopathic medicine took the spotlight and often silenced or pushed out naturopathic or homeopathic practices so that it has become a modern day battle, particularly with large corporations like the FDA in America, Big Pharma, et cetera, that are at war with natural medicine and therapies. Even though they have stood the test of time and there are a lot of scientific studies that prove the effectiveness, there is still a war between natural holistic health and medicine and practices versus the allopathic Western world. But we're very optimistic that it will be merged once again as it was in the past by the, the modern day and older pioneers of aromatherapy. So thankfully, with the advantages and advances of technology and scientific research and studies, aromatherapy is gaining more attention, especially as people are having issues with Western medicine and are more commonly seeking alternative routes of healing. Science is showing there is a real scientific base for these ancient remedies and that plants do have potent healing powers. Now, aromatherapy as practiced today combine, combines several aspects of healing, which enhance each other's effects. Time is spent observing and listening to the patients who often, or the clients, who often unburden themselves of their problems when encouraged by a skillful listener, as well as some dietary advice like cutting out coffee and other caffeinated drinks, listening to relaxing music, and more. So aromatherapy has really gone from that massage stress relief technique to an actual coaching practice and able to really help people and get into their lifestyle. Essential oils have not been clinically tested in the same way as drugs, but they are potentially less dangerous and far less damaging to the body. Their benefits have led to their increasing use by health professionals who have recognized the major role they can play in the reduction of stress. Today, aromatherapy is being used in clinics, hospitals, beauty products, offices, and homes all over the world. In the era of the modern man, essential oils were originally produced for the flavor and fragrance industries were the only ones available for the practice of aromatherapy. 
such oils were routinely standardized or otherwise treated with the goal of meeting the industrial user's needs, which is uniform quality at the lowest possible price, mass production. This doctoring of essential oils was not carried out with deceitful intentions, but as a response to the needs of the fragrance industry. Standardizations are only desirable for fragrance, but is actually required by certain pharmaceutical manuals, which set the standards for minimum concentrations of active ingredients, unfortunately with no criteria for purity. Now we're going to take a look into three modern day pioneers of aromatherapy and the different aspects of that. So first is D. Gary Young, who is a pioneer of essential oils. And he is a naturopath, doctor, researcher, farmer, owner of the leading essential oils company right now, and has been there for over 25 years. He is the developer of many unique essential oil blends and oil-infused products and supplements. And when I say he is the developer, I mean literally he had gone off into the woods and quiet places and received this uh, divine inspiration for these blends that work synergistically with the body for a produced outcome. So his blends are a form of aromatherapy. And he's also the creator of the seed to seal purity standard, which is actually higher than the organic standard. He is called the leader of essential oils and father of the modern day essential oil movement, and rightly so. So Young was first introduced to essential oils when he attended a medical conference in Geneva, Switzerland, where medical doctors were presenting their research on essential oils. He returned to the U.S. with 13 different essential oils to begin his own research. Now, this man who passed away a few years ago, he had such a great love and passion for this, for the farms, for every aspect of it. He would get out there and be a part of the harvest, plant the seeds, and do the research. So he was not just one to make money off of it. He literally, this was his calling and his passion. And it's evident in the highest quality that is produced in all of the products and how it affects people. So through his research, he became so fascinated that he went to France to study and learn the art of distillation under Henri Viaud, who you've already learned about, who was the French father of distillation. And that was in Provence, France, which is the lavender capital of the world. And also he studied and learned from Marcel Espiès, the president of the Lavender Growers Association in France for over 20 years. So we had some great uh, mentors and teachers to learn from. And he was really responsible for bringing that knowledge over into America. In 1988, Young moved to Reno, Nevada and opened his first essential oil business. In 1994, he purchased his first farm to grow plants to distill into oils. And today, his company now produces more than 500,000 bottles of oil per day with international offices throughout the world, more than 15 corporate partner farms, over 3,000 employees, over 4 million members, and a commitment to no waste and sustainability and their seed to seal process that ensures the highest quality in each product so as to maintain and preserve the therapeutic components and truly help the person using the products. So D. Gary Young is really a pioneer in taking this into practice, creating the own essential oils company and making sure it holds to those high quality standards. And now briefly, I'm gonna talk about the raindrop technique. And that is an aromatherapy technique that combines the use of a certain essential oils with Vitaflex and various techniques to aid the body in detoxing and the healing process. It was developed by D. Gary Young over 20 years, tra traveling and learning from different healthy people groups. And he was so fascinated in them, he just went and gleaned from them and found these different techniques, combined them all, and the final version is what you'll learn about next. 
So now we're moving forward to a different branch of aromatherapy. This man who recently passed away is Dr. David Stewart, and he has done phenomenal things. What he did is create CARE the Center for Aromatherapy Research and Education. And there's a lot to his history, but he had a huge fascination for biology and chemistry. He developed the CARE program after his own miraculous healing through the raindrop technique. And the purpose of creating CARE was to teach a streamlined and effective version of the raindrop technique that he that was developed by D. Gary Young, and he partnered kind of got his the tutelage from D. Gary Young and the go-ahead to create the CARE program and to make sure it held to those standards. So it maintains the quality and integrity as certified raindrop technique specialists. What the CARE program does, what Dr. Stewart ushered in, was the ability to legally, ethically, and with integrity practice raindrop technique at the highest quality to ensure the clients get the best experience possible. And the CARE program also teaches the chemistry of essential oils, emotional release with essential oils, the history of anointing and laying on of the hands, the essential oils of the Bible, raindrop technique, and Vitaflex, all using and teaching on essential oils. So people get a streamlined quality sound information without all these billion different contradicting information going on. It gets solid scientific stuff in there. So he has truly revolutionized the education of essential oils, whereas D. Gary Young has revolutionized the usage and availability of essential oils. And to learn more about CARE or attend an upcoming class, visit the official website at raindroptraining.com. Now we're going to move forward to a different branch of aromatherapy. Dr. Benjamin Perkis is a licensed psychologist and essential user who developed an aromatherapy technique called the Aroma Freedom Technique. And that uses essential oils in a specific process to help identify negative thoughts and dissolve them to provide freedom from being stuck. And I have a whole video about the science of it and different videos on um, what it, it, it entails. So you're welcome to check that out afterwards. So he found the aroma freedom technique to be so powerful and effective at transforming his clients that he stopped practicing as a clinical psychologist in order to teach and practice the aroma freedom technique all over the world and train up and certify practitioners. I am proud to be one of them. So to learn more about the Aroma Freedom Technique, just go to the website there. I'll also include the link that you can copy and paste to make it easier. Or you can email me, Crystal Gilbert, at thevinewellnessllc at gmail.com to request more information and links to those videos I told you about on the Aroma Freedom Technique. So to conclude this whole history and in a condensed form, um, aromatherapy, as you now know, has stood the test of time, proving its effectiveness and importance. So thanks to the modern day pioneers and the ones who've come before them, they've worked wholeheartedly and tirelessly in their specific hubs, their branches of the aromatherapy world, Thanks to them, we can now enjoy the benefits of aromatherapy in our own homes whenever we want. And we can begin to incorporate them in as part of a healthy lifestyle. So kudos to them. So to learn more, you can contact me, Crystal Gilbert, at thevinewellnessllc at gmail.com. There you can stay connected and up to date on the latest educational resources and workshops, get started using your own essential oils and aromatherapy in your own home, learn more tips, tricks, and tools, and incorporate aromatherapy into your daily lifestyle. You can learn more about the raindrop technique, care, the aroma freedom technique, as I'm a practitioner of them all. And you can also schedule your very own raindrop or aroma freedom technique session, or just request a consultation call to see where, if you have gotten a lot out of this and want to learn more, that's what we can talk about there. So I hope to see you around. I hope you enjoyed this and you uh, are geeking out a little bit about all this knowledge that has come 
and above all, that you feel a bit more empowered and ensured to take that next step on your essential oil and aromatherapy journey to make it part of your everyday lifestyle. That's all for now. Thank you so much for joining me on the history of aromatherapy, a timeline of essential oils. 